Adonai Enkan Keep my room Shen Kambo Angu Kalom, Asher Bakabano Mikel Hamim, Fanatin to Barukata Adonai, no tain at Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the people and gave to us all the time. Blessed are you, Lord. You are standing this day, all of you, before the Lord your God. Your heads, your tribe, your elders, and your officers, even all the men of Israel. And Moses went and spoke these words unto all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. And the Lord has said to me, You shall not go over this Jordan. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in the book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites that bore the ark of the covenant of the law, saying, Take this book of the law and put it by the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive we do this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah, the Torah of truth, and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord, give us of the Torah. Amen. I just want to say one thing to remember that verse that we just read. You are all standing here this day. That's referring to way back then. Children of Israel, that is you too, standing at the foot of that mountain. Amen. The Lord is at all time at the same time. So experience his word as if it's happening to you now in each moment.
words from my Lord. I'm able to come here to rejoice and to know how God is with us. To see your faces, your lovely faces, that bring a smile unto my heart. To embrace our faith together. To rejoice and to know how wonderful it is to congregate as a body of Christ. It's hard sometimes when you're going through your turmoils and your difficulties and you see all the things that the world is going through. But to come to a Shabbat is a refreshing. <laughs> it's a moment of calm down, take a breath, I thank God for this opportunity and I thank God for Joe and his lovely wife and Paul who I'm learning to love more every day <laughs> and Stephanie I can't remember everybody, else, everybody else's name but I thank God for Yeshua for this opportunity I would like to sing a song if you don't mind it is hard for me to speak the word of God without fans I'm the one, I'm a one-armed player. <laughs> Don't worry about the rest. What counts is what God wants us to do. Amen. Everybody has a gift. Yeah. Yes. Everybody has something to give. Yes. This is the way that God used me to give.
a powerful, beautiful song. Name of Yeshua. Name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm still holding back. No. You guys don't know me yet. My angels, I mean, my, my, my wife doesn't know who I am. <laughs> You 
will be my connection to them. Moses said, but what should I say to them? How should I express myself to them? I know you're talking to me, but how are they going to understand what you're telling me to do? I like this part. You tell them, I am what I am. And let that work in them. But the calling was not easy. We read a little while ago, he was 120 years old. He couldn't no more. He could not make it to the Jordan. But he put in charge Joshua. Why Joshua? Because Joshua was faithful. In the ministry, you need people that are faithful. In the pastorship, you need people that are faithful. You need people who are willing to stand, not against, but for, and help. So that the minister of the church wouldn't have to find himself doing all the jobs. That's the reason why in the times of Moses, Moses needed help. And sooner or later, God spoke to him that he needed to get some needs. Because you can't do it all. See, the calling of the leader requires to lead, but also to delegate. Yeah. Well, to delegate to whom and to what is important. Whom you can put in certain position depends upon the characteristic and the makeup of the person and the will of the Lord on top of it. When I was a young man, I asked God so many things. I wanted God to turn the world upside down. One day the Lord spoke to me. Lord, when are you going to start a ministry in my life? I've been waiting, Lord. The laugh, the Lord smiled. I've been waiting for you to change your mind. I said, what? You see, you want me to do so many things. You want me to change this? You want me to answer you this question and to answer this? But you haven't given yourself totally to me for me to be glorifying you. And the only way you're going to see my glory is if you submit yourself completely to me. Before that, I was preaching and, and teaching. And, but I wasn't quite submitted. Sometimes we, we, we could do all that stuff. But we're not quite submitted. You're missing the whole book. It is not how many sacrifices you made. It's in the obedience of the calling. Because in your obedience, then your sacrifice becomes more, more perfected in him. But when you do sacrifice when you're not obedient, though God might honor you to some degree, but it's not the same when you give it all to him. And God was trying to deal with me so that I could learn to grow spiritually in the Lord. I didn't know that in the near future I was going to be a poor pastor. I didn't know I was going to be ministering in the, in the prisons. I didn't know I was going to be singing or paying your audience. All these things came along the way. As you obey the Lord, God gives you something. And when you pass the test on a certain level, God gives you something else. And he keeps adding things because he wants to mold you into the person that he wants you to be so he could be glorified and then you could use the word of God. For the perfect, for the pur for the purpose of soul being saved and being delivered, Amen. and to bring them into the knowledge of Yeshua. And my God, praise the Lord! When God told me, Abel, you got three things I need to deal with you. I said, Uh oh, I'm the son of a pastor. This is gonna be something good now. Yeah, right. <clears throat> First thing God said, you are very disobedient. I said, Oops, this is not what I came to hear. Sometimes we want to hear what we want to hear, but we don't want to hear what God wants to tell you. Yeah, right. And sometimes we don't want God to tell us because we don't, want to, we don't want to be embarrassed or to find out that it's true. And so sometimes we try to hide the fact, but nothing you can do will not hide the fact that when God knows what he knows, he knows what he knows, and there's nothing you can do about it because all you can do is, Lord, forgive me and help me change. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. He says, how many times I try to raise you up in the morning to pray? And you say to me, tomorrow. And many times I pray, but other times I didn't pray. And then things happen to me that I ask God, why did it happen? If you were to pray, I'm going to prepare you. 
Amen. Does that sound familiar? If you don't listen to the Lord at a certain time when the Lord said to listen to him, we can avoid it some situation, or God will prepare you to deal with the situation so you may overcome. But when we don't prepare, we don't overcome that well. And then you can flounder, and you're going this, and it can last six years, it can last three months, it can last a day, because you missed the mark. And when we miss the mark in what God is trying to do, then it's not so easy. And then it takes much, much more time to get to the point where you, where you left off. Trust me, I've been there. Boy, did I cry. Then the Lord said the second thing. You're stubborn. I said, stubborn. Sometimes we have stubborn pride. Sometimes we have stubborn pride. And we will have a call. When you're prideful, and when you have vanity, when you think more of yourself than what God's told you, you lose your focus. You lose your focus. Thank God that most of you take your focus. But the man, dealing with people is the hardest thing to do in the ministry. You have to have love, compassion, understanding, the willingness to listen, to hear. You know, one of the things that some people do is they want people to hear them talk, but they don't listen to other people. When I'm dealing with a price, when we deal with a situation, I said, no, let them speak first. Let's see what's going on. Then you counsel after that. Don't try to counsel before not knowing the full story because you might be off, way off. And I learned that in leadership. I learned that the hard way. There were people that I cared, that I loved, but sometimes things got a little crazy. Moses had to deal with that. They were driving him crazy from left to right. And if he made a mistake, he became big news. But thank God that they sure Jehovah God was with him. I love Moses. Man of principle. He was a man of principle. He wasn't perfect, but he was a man of principle and a just man. A just man doesn't mean that you're perfect. It means that you have a good heart for the Lord and you like justice and you like the, the truth and you like God to be the center of the universe. Amen. Amen. That's true. Many times we forget how hard it is to be something that God wants you to be. How many times you get put off? How many times people look at you ugly? When I was small, some people thought I was ugly. Then when God started giving me the gift and the talent to do some things we didn't know I had, some started getting jealous. Me jealous, a little ugly duckling, jealous. <laughs> what I had to give was to give to God. God gives you something so that you can use it for his honor and so get jealous, but that's not the point. The point is to use what God gives you to glorify God. And if God did not give you that gift, God will give you something that you can use so that everybody can partake in the body of Christ and do the job and the function that God has called us to be. Amen. 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 Because without leadership, nobody will be stable. And it keeps everything in common, under control. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need to be disciplined by the Holy Spirit. We need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We need to have an understanding of God's Spirit in our lives. When I come here, and I see you guys worshiping God, I feel good. But this is family to me. To be here with Papa, it's family. <laughs> to see my boy over there, it's family. To see all of you, it's family. When I give you a hug, you know I give you a hug. Because it's family. Hallelujah! Even though we have different calling in our lives, even though we have different ways in which God can use us, you know that there's many different ways to one problem? God uses many different methods to reach a, a solution to a problem. Right. I see ministers do something in a different way. 
but got to the point of the problem. I saw another minister doing another way, and he still got to the point of the problem because God uses the ability that God has given us for Him to be glorified. So that way we're not robots. We are all distinct. We are all different, and yet we are alike. Isn't that beautiful? Have you noticed that me and me, me and my buddy here, we look alike? That's right. We got two eyes, two nose, two mouths. And two. Yeah. Then we keep them. He's a lovely man. All of you, I see is God's goodness, God's grace, God's love, compassion, interest, and when we come boldly into his holy presence. When we come here to give him the honor and the glory, we open ourselves as worship. We become worship. Our temple becomes worship because we are coming as a body of Christ to honor the King, the King, and the Lord of Lord. Whether you are a leader or not, in something, in something we are leading, whether in your home, even if you lead your cat and dog, you're leading. <laughs> Something that you do all have a purpose in life. Moses went through his trial. He made it through. We need to go to ours and make it through. Amen. Don't give up your hope and your dreams <clears throat> that you want to be something for the Lord. Even if you're 80 years old, there is still hope. Well, there's breath in your lungs. God can still use you. God could put your hand on somebody who's about to die, and you might make a prayer of faith, and that person could be raised from the dead. There's nothing impossible for God. And before I finish, I want to give you a testimony. One day, my father went to Puerto Rico. He was in the council. I was with my mom. And we did... Uh,
Shabbat Shalom! Hallelujah!